Okay, today I'm going to be showing you the easy way to attend to these anti-roll bar bushes on your Ford Escort Mark V and Mark VI. This is not the way the Haynes manual tells you to do it. Because the Haynes book of lies, you cannot do it the way it tells you. This is how you actually need to do it. I think first we need to move the car across because there's no way I can get in here. Right, let's sort that out. Now you've got your wheel off, this is your anti-roll bar here. This is your drop link. They tend to cause a bit of noise when they go. But the other thing that can also cause noise is the bushes, which are back here, and they are what bolt the anti-roll bar down to the car. And as you can see, mine has worn because you can see where it's been wearing against the edge. And the other side, which I did yesterday, was rattling quite a lot. So, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this side, because I don't think it's quite as bad. But if I get um, a lever under the anti-roll bar and wiggle it somewhere, it's not the ideal bar to be jabbing in places and wiggling. Yeah, you can't see this side. But on the other side, that was moving around like crazy and it was causing a lot of a rattle very much like a drop link would but if you've done your drop links which i have recently and mine have no play i know they look a bit scabby but yeah road salt could be them now on escorts these are they're not a pain to replace but they're a lot harder than the manual says but they're not hard at all to be fair so all you've got is a two bolts there one there and one there bracket lifts off and the bush comes out so you can't get to that one there because the steering gate is in the way so just turn your steering full lock to the direction of wheel you're doing so we're doing the right wheel turn your steering full lock to the right and that'll pull that steering gator in so you can access that front bolt now very easily probably want a bit of wd-40 on there to loosen it up a bit but otherwise there's your bolt. Back one. This is where the Haynes Book of Lies gets you. As you can see, I've just sprayed that down. Now, 10 mil, and you can get straight on there. Would help. If we could actually get in there, like so, and uh, crack that off. It'd probably be pretty tight. Oh no, it's not as bad as the other side was. The other side had to use a bar on the end of my ratchet. This one's coming straight undone. Haynes Book of Lies tells you to undo both. Apparently, you can change the bush without dropping the subframe. That's not true. You can't get into there with a ratchet. You can't get into there with a spanner to get to that back one. It just doesn't fit. What you can actually do, however, is leave that one in place. Haynes Book of Lies says just simply undo both of them and extract it. Doesn't work, you can't get in. So just undo the front one, and then I'll show you how to attack this without touching that back nut. Right, that is practically out now. There it is. Can't get onto that back one, but what you can do is get a large-ish flat blade screwdriver and work under there and pry it up. And what you're gonna do is just bend it out of the way. It's only a thin little metal tab. You can very easily bend it out of the way and then extract your bush. And you don't need to twist it up mega, but just bend it out of the way enough that it clears this front part of the bush. And that is how you're gonna do this without undoing that back nut, bolt. It can be a little bit awkward and fiddly because at the end of the day, but there you go, that's all you need to do. Now, get yourself another jack that you're gonna position 
behind the brake disc like that. I'm using the scissor jack out of the boot. And then just jack up the suspension carefully and slowly. So you relieve the tension off that anti-roll bar. That's probably about enough there because you can see it start to lift. And then you can just push it. It'll probably be a little bit stuck with all the rust on it, but you can just push it out towards the back like that. And then pretty much just put it off. They are split, so you can just twist them. It can be a bit fiddly, but like that. There we go, there is our old one. Again, original Ford, same as the other side. These haven't been replaced before. You can see it's all worn, it's quite a big hole. Let me grab the new one to compare to. I don't think I've brought it across, have I? It's here. So compare it to the new one. Where's that old one just dropped to? You can see the difference in hole size from where it's worn. And then fitting is exactly reverse of removal. So we're just gonna slide it over because it is split. Probably actually easier to come from the back there because we have got that notch to stop it from sliding off. I might want to jack this up a little bit more just so I can press underneath it a bit better. Now I'm fully where that's upside down. What I'm gonna do is slide it on and then twist it round like that. And then just twist it round so it's straight. So the flat bit's at the bottom and then pull it as far as it will come back this way now you can't really see, neither can I to be fair. But it's very understandable when you're here and doing it. Nearly there. Let's get a screwdriver just to pull that forward of that. Nearly there. Don't want that pinched. There you go, like that. And now you can release the suspension to lower that back down fully into place. And that is pretty much job done. Now you can bend this back down very simply and put the bolt in. Now you've bent that back down into place. There's a little bit of a gap, but that's all right because when you thread the bolt in and tighten it up, it will pull that down and pull that square. Just make sure your bolt goes in straight, which you can see mine's not. So back that off a little bit and keep wiggling it around. It won't really want to go in that squarely because at the end of the day, you, your bracket's slightly bent, but just keep working with it and it will go in squarely and it will pull it down properly then. And that'll be job done. So we're practically there now. See how it's pulling it down. Now with this being a little ratchet, what I'm gonna do is gonna get as tight as I can with a little ratchet and then it's going to put a bar on the end and give it just a smidge more because it is a little ratchet. Square bar, less than ideal but that'll probably do. Job done, new anti-roll wheel bush in. The easy way, not the Haynes Book of Lies way. Job is done, straighten your wheel up, wheel back on, job done. No more rattles, no more knocks, no more bangs. 
might handle a little bit better as well because your anti-roll bar will be a bit stiffer and less movie aroundy and it will be able to do what an anti-roll bar is supposed to do a little bit better which is counteract body roll make it a little bit stiffer make the car handle better general anti-roll bar things but yeah job done simple as that not the way the Haynes Book of Lies tells you the easy way <laughs>